Democratic leader, uh, Gordon Hintz. Um, unfortunately, we're here. We don't believe that we should be here for really what is an unprecedented act uh, by the Republican legislature, something that's never been done before in our state's history. The actions that are taken today that are before us will override the will of the people, which were decided on November 6th of this year with the statewide election of Governor Tony Evers and uh, Attorney General Josh Call. Many of the actions taken today will invalidate the results of the will of the people and shows direct contempt for the voters. Many of the acts taken today were not discussed ever during the campaign. And even the speaker and authors of the bill didn't have the courage to come testify before the Joint Finance Committee and answer any questions about the bills before the legislature today. The weak comments that we've heard about co-equal branches and trying to make things that things are fair don't stand up when you look at the actual power grabs that are being done as part of these bills today. What does suppressing the time that people can vote in the state have to do with equal branches of government, for instance? Today is a disgrace as Republican legislature shows direct contempt for the voters of our state. And with that, I want to turn it over to our two joint finance members of the Assembly Caucus, joint, uh, Katrina Shanklin and Chris Taylor, uh, to talk about some of the things that they learned through the debate last night on why today um, is you know, an absolutely horrible day for Wisconsin. Well, thank you, and thank you all for being here. I'm Chris Taylor, I'm the ranking Assembly Democrat on the Joint Finance Committee. You know, yesterday the Wisconsin Elections Commission certified the results of our November 6th general election. Yesterday, Representative Shanklin and I spent 12 hours on the Joint Finance Committee where Republican legislators tried to nullify the results of that election by overriding the voters of this state and taking away the will of the people through the various bills they were pushing yesterday and the bills today that they'll be trying to pass on the floor. Never before in the history of the state of Wisconsin, never before in the history of the state of Wisconsin has an extraordinary session been used to deny the will of the people and to take away powers from a newly elected governor and a newly elected attorney general. Speaker Voss uh, and Majority Leader Fitzgerald, they didn't even have the courage to appear yesterday, which is very, very unusual. They did not have the courage to appear yesterday and defend these pernicious bills that violate the will of the people of this state. But I'll tell you one thing, the public did appear yesterday and they came out in droves. There were about uh, 1,426 members of the public that appeared yesterday despite the very short notice that they had, that we had, of this hearing occurring yesterday. We got uh, almost 300 pages of bills on Friday at 5.30 p.m. and a notice for a hearing on Monday at 12.30 p.m. And that's the kind of notice that the public got. And still, the public came from all corners of this state, Democrat, Republicans, Independent, to express their strong opposition to uh, these bills and the fact that they really override the will of the people of this state. The people want a government for themselves. The people deserve a government for the people, not Republican politicians. Instead of doing this, what we should be doing is working together and focusing on the priorities of the people, not expanding the power of Republican politicians who are reeling after losing every statewide election. You know, Governor-elect Evers ran on pulling the state out of a lawsuit that dismantles the Affordable Care Act. And what these bills seem to do is make that now very difficult. The people said in this last election that they wanted their roads fixed because Republicans have failed for eight years to address our transportation crisis. These bills make, a, make addressing that crisis harder. Governor Lech Evers wants to expand access to health care. These bills hamstring our government and its ability to do just that. We have checks and balances in our government for a reason. In fact, it's so foundational to our democracy to prevent power-hungry politicians from hanging on to and even expanding their power when they lose elections. These bills violate our fundamental principles of our democracy. 
I want the public to know that we, the Democrats standing with me, and this is almost our, really our entire caucus, mm -hmm. that we will never stop fighting for the people of this state and for a government that represents the people, not power-hungry politicians. Thank you. The voters on November 6th made it loud and clear that they wanted change. They wanted new constitutional officers, including a new governor and a new attorney general, and they certainly didn't want a lame duck session that overrides the bill, the will of voters and what amounts to just a power hungry move on behalf of politicians taking out their grubby hands to grab more power at a time when we should be working together to fix our roads, protect and expand access to health care, and invest in our schools and infrastructure. Now, yesterday in the Joint Finance Committee, it was interesting that not only would the author of the bills that were voting on today, Speaker Voss, not even show up and dignify the public hearing with his testimony, we also found that there were no real fiscal estimates on these bills. And so for us to be here today after just a few days of the public and the media and the people across the state having the opportunity to weigh in on these bills is really a shame because these bills could be expensive and costly not only to taxpayers but to our democracy. One of the main questions I asked yesterday to the Legislative Reference Bureau was when were these bills drafted? Now, Republicans have been in power for eight years. They've had full control of state government, a stranglehold, I'd say, on state government for eight years. They could have done these bills at any time. They had the votes, right? Well, something changed after November 6th when they lost every statewide race. Two weeks later, Republicans drafted these bills. We would not be here today if Governor Walker were reelected. We would not be here today if Brad Schimmel were reelected. The people weighed in on November 6th. They said it's time for a change. They said they wanted Governor-elect governor Evers. They said they wanted Attorney General-elect Call. And today, Republicans are coming in, wasting taxpayer money, bringing the legislature back for a lame duck session to invalidate the will of the voters who spoke loud and clear in record midterm turnout. And that's wrong. It's an abuse of power, and it really disrespects the will of the voters. We heard compelling, tremendous testimony yesterday from hundreds of people who asked us. They were from many political ideologies. In fact, at one point, we had a self-described Madison liberal and self-described Reagan Republican sitting next to each other, agreeing on every point that this lame duck legislative session is wrong. It violates and invalidates the will of voters. And instead, we should be doing what the constitutional officers who won campaigned on, working together to fix our roads, protect and expand health care, invest in our infrastructure and education. So we really shouldn't be here today, but the people of Wisconsin should know they can count on Assembly Democrats to fight for them, to listen to them, and to be their voice today and beyond. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Gordon Hintz. We're happy to uh, take any questions um, from the media at this time. Are you expecting any kind of a filibuster? Or what are your tactics going to be on the floor today and tomorrow or next day? Well, if I told you our tactics, there wouldn't be a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Today's an, you know, we don't even acknowledge today or recognize today. It's an illegitimate day, so there's no rules. There's no debate times. Gordon, how should the uh, how should the public be reacting today? Uh, what would what would your message be for the public? How how should they react to this sort of governance? They should be angry. Um, and I think if you talk to all of my colleagues and look at their inboxes and their phone calls, it's been quite some time since I've received the kind of feedback. Um, regardless, this is not how a democracy works. And if these bills go through into law, we really don't have a democracy as it's set up to be. How do you explain to fourth graders how state government works and then describe the actions taken by these power-hungry ideologues who don't want to recognize a democratically elected governor who was elected under the rules that exist, under the powers that exist for many of the things that they were elected to do, they won't be able to do because of these changes being made. 
So the public of all stripes should be outraged that this is the priority for a group of legislators that just can't handle, uh, be, you know, they're sore losers because of the outcome of the election. What would you say to the Republicans who respond by saying, look, we're just codifying what's already in place because they say they trust Scott Walker to work with more than Tony Evers? I mean, it doesn't, you know, if, 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 your, if your argument is that we're just trying to make the branches of government, quote, equal, it can't be subjected based on who is in that office. I voted for Tony Evers because I wanted science to be back in the Department of Natural Resources. I wanted state agencies to function uh, under Tony Evers' administration. If you want to run for governor, if you want to run for attorney general, do that. But don't try to become governor or attorney general through the legislature. That is the lamest argument, and obviously it was indefensible because they refused to even defend themselves. I mean, so many provisions of this bill have nothing to do with any of these things. It's a laundry list of you know, power grabs, Republican takeovers, and ideological wish lists that they know is put to an end because the voters rejected their agenda. It's over. They can't redistrict. So this is their last gasp. Gordon, do the lawyers in your caucus see merit and legal challenges here? If so, along what lines? I'm going to turn it over yeah. to a lawyer in our caucus. Uh, <laughs> the lawyer, yeah, and we have many of them. Absolutely. I mean, look, today, yesterday and today, our focus is to fight for the people of this state to, to use every ounce of energy we have to try to defeat these horrible bills that subvert democracy and subvert the will of the people. So that is our focus. And today we're here to do the same thing. We are going to do everything in our power to fight for the people of this state and make sure that their voices are heard. But everything's on the table to stop this pernicious attack on our democracy. Every remedy we have, Every option we have is going to be on the table. And I think absolutely there are probably going to be some legal challenges. I'm not going to go into the details of that and what that will entail. We need a final bill first. But we, this is probably one of the most serious threats to our democracy that I have seen since I've been in this legislature. And you know what? You saw that in this hearing if you listen to the voices of the people who came out people who came from all over the state who came out and said, this is not what government should be. Government should be for the people, not the politicians. And so today, our commitment right now, today we are going to fight. We are going to fight as hard as we can. Tomorrow, this gets through, we will look at every remedy we have to vigorously advocate for the people of the state of Wisconsin. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice job, you guys.